Hello, I'm Doug, and this is my poster, uh, the CHSH Inequality of Quaternion Series Quantum Mechanics. So let's break out that title into its parts. What is the CHSH Inequality? Well, there's this thing called the Bell's Inequality, and that's used to distinguish between predictions made by hidden variable theories and uh, standard quantum mechanics. And a few years after that paper came out, this, this, um, this paper by these four, four fellows uh, came out, and what it said was, let's say I've got an observer Alice and I've got an observer Bob, and they're measuring a system, that an entangled system, and they measure it at exactly the same angles. Well, the prediction um, is that it's going to make exactly the same <laughs> prediction as hidden variables. But if you change the angle of one measurement device to the other, that will make any difference to the hidden variable people. But it will make a difference to quantum mechanics. It will be more strongly correlated. Uh, and this calculation goes through, through that in detail. Okay, but what about the quaternion series quantum mechanics part? Uh, that's not on the preprint server. <laughs> It's, it's something I've been working on for uh, a little bit of time. And a quaternion is just like a complex number, okay? Except instead of just having i, it has j and k. And the reason I find that so attractive is because when I think about space-time being time for the scalar and three dimensions of space, or energy and a th three different types of directions for momentum, it seems like a, a natural thing to do on an awful lot of physics. And so you know, I've figured out how to derive uh, the Maxwell equations using quaternions and uh, done other things uh, uh, that are a challenge. Uh, but what's a quaternion series? Ah, that is not a division algebra, because uh, that's like d dimensions of these things, and if, if you multiply two carefully chosen uh, quaternion series, they can be orthogonal and give you a whole bunch of zeros. That makes them a semi-group with inverses. Okay, so it's a different mathematical animal, and you can show that a lot of this, the properties you expect of a Hilbert space work with quaternion series, and therefore you might be able to do all of quantum mechanics. I certainly haven't done all of quantum mechanics. I'm just picking and choosing uh, random little points uh, to do that. Oh, so why was this of interest? Uh, because there's a guy on the internet uh, Joy Christian, who thinks uh, that he's disproved um, Bell's inequality using quaternions. I was like, oh man, that'd be sad. Because <laughs> then I would have to give up on my work. Um, and so he said, well, let me, let me look at this uh, hard calculation, see, see how I can do it. And um, so the first seven pages of uh, what would be this poster would be dead dull. Um, it'd be just um, a calculation where I'm working with quaternions of the form a, B, zero, zero, which is a complex number, okay? A complex, there are three complex numbers that are subgroups of a, of a quaternion. A, and so I better get the, the right result, and in fact, I do. I then, in the final three pages, say, hey, what if I point that thing uh, in the one, one, one direction? And sure enough, it doesn't work. Unless you normalize uh, your vector part, uh, your imaginary vector part, to be uh, have a normal one, and then it works fine. Now, in every calculation you do, you have to point in that direction. You, you can't switch around where you point. And, you, and that, to me, actually makes sense physically. If you think of what experimentalists do, they're incredibly precise about where they point uh, their, their apparatus. And so I call this, don't point like a drunk, do point with precision. Okay, so you got to like pick a direction. I don't care what it is, and 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 use it, and then you can do quantum mechanics. And you might say, well, that's not that interesting, uh, and I'm not claiming it is. It's kind of boring. Okay, but here's the key thing: it works. All right, there's a book called Quaternion Quantum Mechanics by Stephen Adler, and he'll say somewhere in there he said there was superluminal. Um, information transfer. It's like, well, then that's wrong, right? <laughs> Why write the book? I don't know. Uh, he did, and he's certainly not working in the area anymore because, well, it doesn't work the way he, he constructed it. 
and I think there's a way higher likelihood of working by, you know, uh, this type of approach. So, anyway, uh, that's that's the story with this poster. Thank you very much.